Hey everyone! Welcome back to Yu Gi Oh! Duelist and Roses. In the last video, we not only took on Ishtar, we took on Custom Duel and we demolished them both. Yeah! We are so good. No, they're both easy battles, but yeah. Okay, we did pretty well. And now we're just going to sort out our deck and then we're going to take on this new interesting guy, Richard of York. And I think, I believe we're going to be treated to some cutscenes or at least some dialogue, which has been pretty empty for the last five or seven, five or seven battles. Five or seven is now a statement. Okay, what are we going to do? We certainly want this trap in because traps are awesome and that's a really powerful one. Um, I'm not sure what we want to get rid of though. Just looking for five cost creatures or anything that's kind of useless. Anything that's... I think we're going to get rid of Harpy Lady because um. Yeah, she's not very useful right now. If we get more Harpy cards in future, then she'll be handy. Or if we get a Dragon card that we actually want to use, because she fuses with that to make quite a powerful Dragon, but for now, she's not worth it. We may get rid of these cards also, because we very rarely use them for their defensive capabilities. Even though they're quite good for that. Okay, um... Anything else we really want in the deck right now? Quickly go for everything. Okay. Launcher Spider could fit back into the deck, but I think we do have quite a lot of expensive cards in it right now. So, yeah, I, th I think we're good right now. Yeah, we should be good. I mean, if we come into any problems, we can we can try rearrange it. But I think I think we're gonna be all right. Let's quickly save it after the past few experiences, and let's get into Richard of York, which I believe should be a cutscene. And he's dead center, so exciting. Richard Sly Sheen of York. I noticed he's got quite a high deck cost, so he might be quite difficult, but we'll see. Let's go. Hmm, he doesn't seem to be aware that we're the guy that's just destroyed most of his troops. So that's interesting. I think he believes this is just like a friendly battle with some goon. Hey goon! Some goon that isn't all that good. So it's going to be quite a surprise when we manage to defeat him. If we manage to defeat him, that is. Okay, what we're going to do, advance as always. Tempted to play the trap straight away, but instead I believe we're just going to do this one fusion we do know. No, I don't want to buff it though. Because I, I want to... Nah, fuck it, we will. Because it is quite a powerful female fusion. Because the Mystical Elf, even though it's quite a good strategy, it's not all that powerful. I've been crediting it as being incredibly powerful, simply because um, we had no better alternatives at the time. And one thing I just realised, this is a Beast Warrior which gets advanced in Meadow, which is fucking amazing. I'm so glad I made that decision right there. Okay, this is pretty huge. Nearly 3,000 attack on the first turn. Uh oh. <laughs> he's, he's gonna contest that though, isn't he? What the fuck? Oh my god. Maybe this... I think this guy may be like... He, his AI is intentionally shit, because it's meant to show how incompetent he is as a leader. I don't know, I might just be speculating there. But I've never had much trouble with him. Although he has quite good cards and they they get a good advantage off the meadow, so yeah. He can be quite tricky, but I've never really had trouble with him. And he does seem like an incompetent guy, just from the story. So yeah, whatever. I, I do like when games do that though, like they, they alter the gameplay around the personality. We see it with um Panic or Dark Ruler, whatever he's actually called. We also see it with, um, well, Weevil plays very defensively, as does Necromancer, although I don't really credit Necromancer as being a defensive guy. I don't know. <laughs> I think he's a coward, so that's always that. Oh, that's for Weevil, in fact. Okay, I should shut up. Now, 
seeing as um, Mystical Elf is a spellcaster, and spellcasters are like negatively affected by the meadow, we're not going to go for that fusion in this deck on, on this battle. So instead, we're just going to sacrifice a lot of cards because our Swordmaster is also a warrior. To get him on this uh, on this battle would be quite huge. And we're going to go straight in his face. And next turn we'll be able to attack him, unless he plays something defensively, but... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see when it comes. I should stop, like, trying to predict the future. Oh, fuck. I don't know why he played it there. I mean... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, what can I do, though? It's good that we've got this trap. It's very useful. What kind of sucks about this is that... Um, I'm obviously not going to get the meadow effect, and more so, I'm going to end on this tile so I can't chase him. I probably shouldn't have done that, but whatever, it's too late now, and we're certainly not going to pass up the opportunity to attack him this turn, because we're nearly going to finish him in just one attack, so that's pretty awesome. Um, yep. I've got to start doing these incredibly quick battles, because I don't like having one, um, more than one battle per video. Okay, we've got to see what this thing is that he buffed up so much. I think I saw 2,000 after the trap effect. No, oh, 2,600. Yeah, we can kill him with our thing when it's on... Yeah, we can kill him on our thing. Anyway, because once he goes into mountain, he's also negatively affected. We could sacrifice our chick to um, kill it. Hello. I mean, that's not an incredibly smart move to do right now. It's not, it's not exactly necessary. Um... So I'm going to keep on advancing on the mountain, because I'd rather trap him into the corner. I'm not entirely sure if he has many mountain advantageous cards. I believe he's mostly warriors, if not entirely warriors. So I'm not too worried about him pulling out a massive dragon and killing her on a terrain that he's more advantage advantageous on. Even if he does, I believe we can just like, get a sneak attack. Now, since we're so close to him and he hasn't got many creatures defending him right now, even if he pulls out one creature, I think we could still get in there and defeat him. Meow. <laughs> um, trying to think. I don't know if he has any traps or not. Yeah, you know what? I think I will. I think I will, um... Get rid of the dinosaur simply because we have um, Suj in there, so if we get to the point where we can summon a big creature again, we'd, we'll not use him anyway, so it's better just to get rid of him now. We're gonna we're gonna um, sacrifice this chick to kill this, just because I'd rather have one big creature on the field and him have a zero, rather than me have two and he have one. Although I can't really justify why that's better. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sure it's going to play out in our advantage now. It's always good to have the enemy pinned into a corner, but since we're dealing with warriors it might not be as good because we'd rather be on the mountain. I mean on the meadow. At the same time we don't actually have that many warriors, we just happen to have a few powerful warriors. Okay. Don't really want to play this. I want to have the freedom to play this next turn if I want to. So I'm going to not play the petty moth, and this is just um, showing me that I probably shouldn't have put this in the deck. I could have put another tra um, spell or trap card, and then I would be able to discard it um, without using any star cost. So yeah, maybe I'll have to change that next time. Um, what am I going to do? First of all, I'm going to attack. See what's here. Okay, it's just something crap. Yeah, I'm going to trap him into the corner. Okay, yeah. Even though he can summon something and attack me now, he's not going to deal 4,000. So yeah, I'm pretty comfortable this is the best way. Just so he can't run anymore. And plus next turn, I could theoretically um, kill whatever's here and then pin him into the corner for a, a defeat via being pinned rather than actually taking out his life points. And 
I'm going to try that, just, just for the gimmick of it, because I don't think we've done it yet. I can't remember doing it. Just discarding out everything at this point, simply because if we somehow fail, we'd I would rather get a big sword master, but okay, we're pretty good. Very easy battle. I believe it's intentionally easy, and it makes them quite a decent um, grinding target to get powerful warrior cards. Since the battles normally go quite quickly and very easily, but um, first of all, we're not going to do that, and second of all, we don't really want warrior cards too much. What do we want though? Let's see. Hmm. In fact, I think we do want those um, power up cards because I believe they would affect our sword master. And later in the game, when we're facing incredibly powerful enemies, he. The advantage of building up one big guy is going to become more important. And not necessarily later in the game, more um, more so against specific enemies that don't have good counters against one powerful opponent. Okay, enough talk, let's go for one of those axe things. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of blanking out trying to get it, I can't get it in my eyesight, I can't really... I don't know. I'm, I wasn't even close, I don't know what happened there, I just fucking blanked out a bit. Yeah, we got one in the end. And two crappy warriors. Let's see what that actually affects, because I think it's warriors that are dark type, which... I don't know, let's have a look before I start making up things. Okay, story mode. Story time, rather. I like this music. Oh shit! Yep, you're an idiot, Richard. Oh, Pegasus, you sneaky bastard. I suppose they, um, they give subtle hints that this may happen in the actual gameplay because he uses cards such as Change of Heart and he also has no qualms running over his own cards. So it's showing you that he's like a betraying kind of guy that likes to switch sides. So I think that's neat. Anyway, let's, let's advance. Now, I'm kind of confused about this because Richard mentions that he's better on the battlefield and then by that I mean, I believe he means like actual combat. So I don't know why people are, and he like, he implies that the battlefield's more important than card games. But everyone else seems to imply card games are much more important than actual swordplay so I don't know what's going on regarding all this magic shit. Oh, okay, Richard, okay, Pegasus is in, in back stabbing betrayal guy. That's not very good logic though, I mean... He hasn't really got any bargaining power, I guess. I guess if Pegasus does win, then he's gonna fuck him up. Or he can spare his life a little bit to save his own kid. Okay, I'm gonna stop an analyzing. Analyzing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> analyzing. Oh, and here we get to see actual swordplay, which is interesting. Ah, uh, kind of, that's an iconic moment, so I shouldn't make fun. But I was kind of hoping it'd say like a card, a card, my kingdom for a card. At the same time, I'm glad they didn't because it's quite dramatic. 
quite a powerful line. <laughs> There's Joy. It's just so ill-fitting to this, to this cutscene thing. Me best guess. This Pegasus is Scottish all of a sudden. I don't even know if that's a Scottish thing, I might just be racist at this point. That's probably a typo. Aha, we're actually going to Stonehenge. To face awesome suit man. And look at that deck cost. This is gonna be a tough battle. Um we're gonna find out next time if we can succeed or not. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.